Hi, my name is Bonnie Lind, and I've been asked to talk about coffee and coffee tree crop insurance. My experience in the field is as an agent currently who has been writing crop insurance in Hawaii since 1998. I had prior to that experience with a private company and the USDA risk management agency itself. And I'm based in California. General information is uh, about this USDA program is that it's managed by the risk management agency. It is uh, the agency that develops sound crop insurance products for farmers and ranchers across the nation and including in Hawaii, delivers crop insurance through public and private company partnerships, and then provides subsidies through the USDA for cost savings to growers. There are two policy forms when we're talking about coffee crop insurance. One is the Hawaii Tropical Fruit Provisions, and that provides a guarantee of cherry production. And the second one is the Hawaii Tropical Tree Provisions that uh, provide dollar coverage by tree age and count for coffee trees. So for a coverage overview, we're gonna talk about the coffee cherry crop insurance first. Cherries are covered against adverse weather conditions, insects and disease, when sufficient control measures are being used. Uh, nematodes are not considered an insured cause of loss on coffee trees that are less than five years old, however. Uh, fire is covered as long as the grower is doing everything to keep his farm free of weeds and pruning debris. Earthquake, tsunami, volcanic eruption are covered, and wildlife as long as the farmer has attempted to use some or whatever prudent wildlife control measure is available. The failure of irrigation water supply if the grower irrigates and if it's due to a cause listed previously. So the loss of cherry on trees that have been affected with the disease and whose destruction is authorized by us. So in this case, the trees are not covered unless they're insured under the tree provisions and meet the definition over there on those provisions of dead. There's no coverage against damage or loss due to the inability to market the crop other than the actual physical damage from an insurable cause listed. For example, quarantine's not covered. And then there are insurability requirements. Coffee trees must have reached age three in order for the cherry on those trees to be covered. And it's uh, age three by December 31st. And to meet that qualification, that means greater than 24 months on that date. Guarantees of production are based on a grower's approved yield in cherry pounds, and that can be derived from actual average production uh, of a grower's history, and the grower can use up to 10 years of data. The risk management agency's transitional yields for crop insurance purposes, and a combination of those two is also sometimes seen in our yield histories. And it may also be adjusted by the RMA higher or lower for upward or downward trending farms. Here's an example of an approved yield uh, based on production history. We actually complete a grid that looks like this. Down the left side, you'll see uh, the crop years that we are reporting for. And we start with a minimum of four years of data. And the second column over would be the production, either actual or if it's, if it's a transitional yield we're using, that's left blank. And if you follow across, you'll see that the yields are per acre on this five acre farm in the next to the last column. And then the last column indicates whether it's a transitional yield provided by the risk management agency or an actual yield. So in this case, the grower had three years of actual. We were able to plug in the transitional for the fourth year, coming up with a total of 19,623 pounds for the four years and coming up with a simple average of 4,906 pounds, which happens to be the approved yield. The coverages that are available are something that the grower has to make a choice about. So the grower elects either a buy-up level with guarantees of 50 to 75% of that approved yield. He can choose a portion of the price selection that we pay per pound in the event of a loss. 67 to 100% of that is available for his election. Last year, it was $2 and almost six cents per pound for um, cherries, unless they were organic, then there's a higher price or there's a catastrophic coverage level. It's the lowest level and it's a 50% automatic guarantee of production with a 55% established price. So it'd be around a dollar 10 plus uh, per cherry pound. 
the 2022 price elections aren't published as of this um, lesson plan being written. Uh, generally, they come out um, around now or early October. And then as far as cost goes, it's a USDA program that's subsidized and uh, provides subsidies to growers who qualify. For the catastrophic coverage level, the premium is completely subsidized. And then there's a $655 admin fee, which is pretty steep and not really uh, good for growers who have small acreages. So this is uh, more designed for growers that have uh, large acreage numbers and want to keep the cost down on their crop insurance. There's no additional premium charged at that level for growers who qualify for USDA subsidies. And then the buy-up levels uh, include a $30 admin fee plus an annual premium. So it's cheaper to go that route generally for farmers that have five to 10 acres. And of course the subsidized premium uh, is just available for qualified growers. And how do you get a subsidized premium? Uh, there's a requirement that you are um, meeting the criteria for highly erodible and wetland conservation compliance under the USDA Farm Bill. Um, how do you, uh, who needs to be in compliance? Anybody who wants a crop insurance premium to be subsidized. So you don't have to participate in that um, cons uh, conservation compliance certification. However, your premiums are drastically increased if you do not. Uh, anyone that wants to comply must provide a certification on form AD 1026, and that's through the Farm Service Agency. And the deadline for that on copy is August 15th for the year that you're qualifying for. So again, uh, how do you comply? If you already have one on file, uh, AD 1026 at the, at the local FSA office and the information is still current, you don't have to do anything. Uh, once it's filed, you don't have to annually file it unless you uh, make a change in your farm plan or your land or your entity. And you can always contact FSA to make uh, to verify that your AD 1026 is updated and still in play. This is an example of coverage and cost based upon the approved yield of 4,906 pounds that we discussed earlier. This example shows all the coverage levels for a one acre farm in Hawaii County having that same approved yield. I specify Hawaii County in this example because rating, transitional yields, and price selections can vary from county to county. The coverage levels available are shown in the first column on the left. The first line of the first column shows CAT or catastrophic level, which provides a 50% of the approved yield in guarantee, or in this case, 2,453 pounds. The second column shows the percentage of the price available for CAT, or 55%, and that would mean that a grower with a greater than 50% loss would be paid $1.13 per pound lost, or for each pound below the guarantee of 2,453 pounds that the grower produced. The subsidized premium is shown in the next column and is zero for CAT. It's 100% subsidized, but you're reminded uh, by the notation below that the annual administrative fee is $655 for policies insuring at the CAT level. And the unsubsidized premium, if you were not conservation compliant, would be $17 in this example. The next line shows the, next, uh, the first level of buy-up or a 50% guarantee with 100% of the price paid in the event of a loss. The subsidized premium is $20 and the unsubsidized premium is $62. So you can see the benefit of the subsidy working here. It's dramatic and it's very important to make sure your conservation, uh, your conservation certification is current and on file at the Farm Service Agency. The table continues to show the other coverage levels in 5% increments up to the 75% coverage level with a guarantee of 3,680 pounds per acre at the maximum coverage level costing $108 an unsubsidized premium. And again, the notation at the bottom of the screen shows that admin fees added uh, to the policies are $655 for anyone participating at the CAT level and $30 for anyone participating at one of the buy-up levels. So now to go to the Hawaii Tropical Tree Provisions to, cover, uh, to review the coffee tree crop insurance provisions. Very similar causes of loss are covered against. 
adverse weather conditions, insects and disease, as long as the grower is trying to control them. Nematodes are not covered on trees that are younger than five years old. Fire where the grower has a clean farm that weeds have been controlled and the debris has been removed. Earthquake, tsunami, volcanic eruption, and wildlife as long as the growers made some attempt to control them. And the failure of irrigation water supply due to one of these causes. For trees lost to be claimed under the Hawaii Tropical Tree Provisions for coffee, they must meet this definition of dead. A, a tree is considered dead whenever there's no live wood in any of the verticals or in the trunk. The tree is, is uprooted or all verticals have been broken to less than one inch above the ground or the tree has been diagnosed by a crop expert at the University of Hawaii or the State Department of Ag as infected with nematodes and they determine that nematode infection has reached 50% or the expected production of the tree has been reduced as a result of the nematode infection by at least 40% over the two previous years. Uh, notice that the uh, diagnosis of um, any type of disease is not included in this definition. So trees that have um, some type of uh, disease and the trees are removed just because they have been diagnosed with the disease don't meet the definition of dead for claim payment unless all these other criteria apply. So the Hawaii Tropical Tree Provisions provide for a dollar guarantee on coffee trees based on tree count, tree age, and the percentage of coverage level and established price. So growers again can choose 50 to 75% coverage. On coffee trees, 100% of the price selection is automatic for buy-up policies, and 55% of the established price is automatic for cap policies. Coffee trees only have to be planted in the farm by December 31st prior to the crop year for which insurance is being applied for. The company must make an inspection and find the trees to be healthy and disease free and to find that the good farming practices are being followed on the farm. And then an insured or an applicant must provide at least uh, provide evidence of at least four consecutive years experience of growing coffee trees and that's excluding the year they were planted out in the farm. Uh, an insured or an applicant may request the use of a farm manager or mentor's experience. That would just be a written statement uh, describing the experience of the farm manager or the mentor and their participation in the farming of the trees. And then the decision is made on a case by case basis for the, com the company has to review uh, what is being submitted and agree that uh, this adds up to four years of experience contributed towards the farm that's being insured. There's a couple of options on tree policies that don't exist on some of the other policies. Uh, the first one being the occurrence loss option or OLO. And what it does is it takes away the deductible and changes the loss payment trigger, begins paying immediately once 3% of the trees on the insured unit are lost. So rather than satisfying a deductible of say 25% on a 75% coverage level policy, only 3% of the trees have to be considered dead before claims can be paid. And then it applies the deductible on a per tree basis once the loss trigger is activated. Another option which improves coverage under the tree policy is the comprehensive tree value endorsement provides an additional benefit for the loss of productivity of trees lost on the farm. And what it does is just gives you another lump sum payment, uh, which is 50% payable at the time the land has been cleared and the soils treated and ready uh, to be replanted. And then the second 50% payment is paid at the time the land has been replanted to a coffee, tropical trees, or another perennial crop. And that has to occur within two years in order for the insured to receive that second payment. Here's an example of cost and comparing it with um, basic coverage to with the OLO and with the OLO and the CTV because those can be selected individually as options to add onto the policy or combined. So we show the same coverage levels along the, le uh, the left column uh, cap through 75% and then we have a per percentage of price selection which is 4325 which is last year's price for a mature tree in Hawaii County. 
um, the basic coverage subsidized premium in the middle column shows zero for cat all the way up to $37 for this example of 500 trees age four or older. So it's not hugely expensive without these options. The next column shows the estimated premiums running from 48 to $99. So it's just about tripling the premium for that 500 trees, still not super expensive. But when we start looking at the OLO plus the comprehensive tree value extra lump sum payment, the premiums go up significantly again. Uh, the 50 to 75 percent coverage levels are running from $108 to $222 for that 500 trees. Uh, the next portion we're going to cover is the notices of loss and claims. There are requirements for notifying your company of loss. They have time limits. You should report any possible damage immediately, even if you're not sure it will result in a loss. So when the, an event occurs or you notice some damage, that's um, when you should be notifying your agent of a loss, not when you know whether or not it has actually resulted in dead trees. The policy provisions include a lot more details regarding this issue and reporting losses. So please review these with your agent, get a copy of your policy and review those so that you're not missing any deadlines. The best thing to remember is just to call anytime something might happen to cause a loss. So claims uh, are determined uh, by the company. So all the determinations, loss inspections, record reviews, they're all done by the approved insurance provider or the company's loss adjuster, not, not agents. Agents are prohibited from participating in the loss inspections and uh, claims pre claim preparation. Basically, they take notices of loss and turn it over to the company, and that's where the company picks up and does everything from that point forward. All specific claim uh, questions that you might have related to your notice of loss should be directed directly to the company claims loss adjuster. The coffee cherry loss example. Uh, this shows an approved yield in Hawaii County of 5,000 pounds on a one acre farm and a 75% coverage selected, uh, resulting in a 3,750 pound uh, guarantee per acre. And then from that, we subtract either pounds that were picked or pounds that were not picked but appraised by the company as um, pickable. And in this case, we used 1,000 pounds, leaving uh, 2,750 pounds per acre uh, deemed a loss. And then the lost pounds is multiplied times the price selection per pound for a gross indemnity of 5,657 pounds. I'm sorry, $5,657. Here's a simple coffee tree claim example based on 500 trees in Hawaii County, multiplying those trees by the $43.25 per tree reference price for age four trees, uh, resulting in a value of insured trees for that farm of $21,625. And in this example, I show 300 dead trees. We value those at $43.25 a piece for a total of 12,975 insurance value of dead trees. That's divided by the overall value of trees on the farm of 21,625, resulting in a 60% damage factor. And from that, we, uh, we subtract the deductible of 25%, leaving a 35% payable loss. We multiply that 35% payable loss times the value of trees on the farm resulting in a gross indemnity of $7,219. Here's a similar example with the occurrence loss option added in. If you run down to the bottom, it shows that same $7,219 payable without the option, but one line above, you notice that there's $9,731 payable with the OLO option after the deductible is applied. So there's an increase in benefit right there. Uh, there would have been a payable claim either way, but it increases with the OLO option. Here's the comprehensive tree value endorsement added in. We, uh, this is an additional payment in addition to what we just saw on the previous screen. And if you go down to the bottom, well, about midway, you'll see that the CTV reference price is 54.15. So it's actually a higher price per tree than the basic coverage. And the reason for that is to provide some income related to the loss of 
productivity and having to replant the trees. So once we make the computations on the 300 trees, the OLO has already removed the deductible uh, up front. So we make the simple computation of 300 trees times $54.15 with a CTV value of 16,245 multiplied times the coverage level of 75%, leaving $12,184 payable in two payments. And here is an example of occurrence loss option again, but only 100 trees dead. And there's uh, zero payable without this option if you go down to the very bottom. But the one line up, you'll see that there's $3,244 payable on this 100 tree loss with the OLO option. So it's a very valuable option to take a look at. Uh, there's also the option of adding an endorsement called the Hurricane Insurance Protection Win Index endorsement. It can be added to both coffee and coffee trees. It covers a portion of your deductible on your underlying policies. The full value of the endorsement is paid if your county is within an area of sustained hurricane force winds from a named hurricane, and that's on, based on data published by the National Hurricane Center. It requires a separate application, and it also adds in another administrative fee of $30 annually. It's not available, however, on trees that have the OLO option because the uh, deductible has already been removed by that option. So in summary, there's a couple of types of coverage to consider. There's the cherry uh, coverage and the tree coverage. Either or both may be carried. They can be carried alongside a whole farm policy, and if you participate in both uh, types of policies, you'll get a cre premium credit on the whole farm policy for the uh, basic um, cherry and cherry tree coverage. The options on tree coverage include OLO, CTV, you can add one or both. And uh, you should consider adding the hurricane insurance protection. It adds additional benefits and it's uh, pretty inexpensive. And then additionally, don't forget to check with FSA about conservation certification required in order to qualify for these subsidized premiums, keeping your premium costs way down. Uh, there's a deadline to apply for these policies and for all of them that we just discussed, it's December 31st prior to the crop year that uh, insurance will begin. Uh, insurance attaches on January 1 if you signed an application and gotten it to your agent by December 2. And then there's a 30-day 30 30 waiting period if you've signed your application and gotten it to your agent sometime after December 2nd. You can apply by contacting an agent. Uh, you can go to the Risk Management Agency's website and click on Find an Agent. And all companies and agencies have the same USDA policy provisions and rates and rules issued by the USDA's Risk Management Agency. And we're all subject to um, the equal opportunity rules provided by the USDA. None of us can discriminate, discriminate against an applicant for any reason. And if you have any questions about my presentation, here's my contact information. I'd like to say thank you for your time. And that concludes this portion of the program.